Ladies and gentlemen, how are y'all doing? Today we're previewing the Dodgers and the Padres game number five that is happening tonight at 8 p.m. If you want to watch this game and listen live, show me uh, on my YouTube channel, this YouTube channel that you're watching it on or whatever platform that you're watching this on. Uh, go check it out, 8 p.m. We're going to be watching this game five live, win, and you go to the NLCS and potentially win the World Series. I think probably, not probably, but a lot of people could argue whoever wins this game tonight is going to win the World Series. I'm very excited. This has been such a great series so far from both teams. It's obviously one of the best rivalries in baseball. In my opinion, the best rivalry over the past five years, four years uh, in all of Major League Baseball. But this has been a very well-played series. Both of these teams are very, very talented teams. Their offenses are incredible. Their pitching staffs are incredible. Their bullpens are all everything is is really on point the defense also in the series has been really really great so some big keys that i think are going to impact tonight uh the dodgers offense erupted in game number four they scored 10 runs they shut down the padres lineup with their bullpen but their offense had some key contributors that i think are really going to be massive in this game mookie betts uh really lit up he had his best game of the playoff so far i think he had two for five i uh, hit a home run is that bats looked really, really comfortable. Mookie Betts, of course, needs to be moved. But really, in my opinion, good and clutch at bats. Teoscar Hernandez in the four hole is, of course, really big. He always comes through. This entire season has had so many massive hits and home runs for the LA Dodgers. And Will Smith. Will Smith has really struggled this series. Will Smith, when the Dodgers offense is right, Will Smith is batting fourth. And he is driving in Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman over the past couple of years. Now, of course, you got Otani, you have Teoscar Hernandez. But if Will Smith can go back to being the Will Smith that drives Robs and runs that has really clutch at bats. That is, of course, the elite defender that he is behind the plate. Uh, I mean, that just extends the Dodgers lineup so much. We're also going to talk about Gavin Lux later on in this video uh, as a really big key who's actually played really well over the past couple of days. Uh, so you Darvish and Yoshinobu Yamamoto, we probably should have started this preview off with uh, talking about the pitching matchup, but you Darvish in game number two, going on four days rest for this game number five start, yeah, ha had seven innings, three hits, one run, and, and dominated the LA Dodgers. Now, I actually take back the word dominated because I thought you Darvish got hit hard. He got, I'm not saying he got lucky, uh, but Mookie Betts had that Jerickson profile rob where that would have been a home run. Uh, and there were multiple plays. Fernando Tatis Jr. had a, a leaping play in right field. Luisa Rise, there was, I think, a, a situation in the second inning. Bases loaded, one out. Luisa Rise. Uh, he got a liner right at him, able to catch it, step on first base, able to get out of that jam. Of course, you Darvish looked really good. I love you, Darvish. One of my favorite pitchers in baseball. But I, I wouldn't say, I, I think the Dodgers can build off of what they did in game number two, and they have a chance to hit him. The key with you Darvish is just commanding his breaking pitches. If you Darvish can command his breaking pitches, it's really just about not leaving the fastball middle. And if he's able to commit his breaking pitches, he's able to get away with that fastball wherever he's commanding it that day. Of course, he's got so many different pitches that he can go to. So I trust you, Darvish, in this big situation. He's always had really good command. He's had a lot of big game moments uh, throughout his entire career. So you, Darvish, is, of course, going to be massive. And I'm very interested to see how he pitches versus Yoshinobu Yamamoto in game number one. Yamamoto got rocked. Three innings, five hits, five earned runs. Yamamoto has a chance to turn the tide right here. He's had a really uh, a, a, a up and down. A lot of stuff has happened in his first year in America. He was very hyped up, of course, to be one of the best pitchers in all baseball. It has not worked out. He's had injuries, and he's just been inconsistent. But he's had really good moments before. And Yoshinobu Yamamoto... In this start, he's really getting an opportunity in game five, win or go home in L.A. to set the tone and really just change the entire discussion around Yoshinobu Yamamoto's name. Um, in, 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 I, I, I rewatched the first inning of his game, number one start, and, and, and the thing I noticed with Yamamoto is that he was scared to attack the Padres hitters in the zone. There was a point, I think he was at 12 or 13 pitches in that first inning, and he threw four strikes compared to like seven or eight balls. To Fernando Tatis Jr., it was just splitters low, sliders low, fastballs low. It, it was just not pitches in the strike zone. You have got to attack these pitchers here. You've got some of the best stuff in all baseball. If Yoshinobu Yamamoto is pounding the strike zone like we know he can, Yoma, Yamamoto could really have a massive start. I think Yamamoto, I'm not going to lie to you, I think Yamamoto is going to have a really, really big start. He has a chance to really, again, just change the discussion. I'm very excited to see Yamamoto in a Game 5 situation. I love that the Dodgers trust him. 
uh, and they're going to put him back on the mound. Really not many other choices. They could do another bullpen day technically, but uh, we're going to ride with Yamamoto, see how he looks early on. Of course, if he doesn't look good, you immediately go to the bullpen, immediately go to the bullpen as we have the rest and the depth in our bullpen that we can go this entire game and we trust ourselves. Uh, so I'm very excited to see Yamamoto. The bullpens of both teams are, in my opinion, very even, but also very different in their strengths. The Padres, their back three in Jason Adam, Tanner Scott, and Robert Suarez are are locked down. And I think that really, I mean, they they're it's uh, Tanner Scott and Robert Suarez, them two in the eighth and ninth inning is is I mean, maybe the best uh to probably the best in baseball. I'm thinking about the Astros. The Astros, their their back three is also really, really good. But um, this is why the Padres made uh that trade and gave up very high level prospects to get Tanner Scott. Uh, for these situations, the Padres, if you Darvish can give them six innings, seven innings, potentially the po- even five innings of, of, of baseball where they're winning the Padres, if they're winning going into the sixth, seventh, eighth inning, they feel really good about winning this game. While the Dodgers, uh, of course, the Dodgers have a lead or late in this game. They, they feel good, but not nowhere near as good as the Padres do with their back end of the bullpen. But the Dodgers have really good depth in their bullpen. Michael Kopech, you look at their entire game number four bullpen. Michael Kopech, Alex Vesia, Blake Trident. Blake Trident, I mean, the sinker slider combination. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, Ryan Brazier, Evan Phillips. Evan Phillips is a big guy. Evan Phillips in 2022 and 2023 was maybe one of the, he was one of the best closers in all of baseball. This year has struggled, but Evan Phillips, when he's right, he is a high end ninth inning guy. I don't know if they're going to use him as a closer. Uh, I probably, they're going to use Michael Kopech, I think in that situation, uh, but we'll see. They've really used uh, probably a closer by committee. Blake Trinan, you could see him in there. One thing I, I just, is Joe Kelly healthy? Yeah, Joe Kelly's out. That sucks. That sucks for the Dodgers bullpen, but uh, they have really good depth in their bullpen. Uh, but again, their back end, I don't trust it as much as I do the Padres. So if the Padres are down a couple runs, put in Michael Kopech, put in uh, uh, um, Alex Vesey. Like the the Padres could put together a rally with the with their with their lineup. Um, and, and two key factors uh, that guys that I think could really do damage in the lineups is Fernando Tati Jr. Of course, I know it's the obvious one, but uh, he's really been interesting. The at bats again, I, I loved watching that first at bat uh, versus Yamamoto to see how he pitched him. Uh, again, everything was low in the strike zone, splitters low, sliders low. He got him on a 2-0 slider. Um, I'm interested to see how Yamamoto is going to pitch to him. You cannot let Fernando Tati Jr. beat you. If you give, if you give him a fastball, a middle of the plate, a heart of the plate, where any 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 pitch that he's uh, middle right now, Fernando Tati Jr. is absolutely crushing. Fernando Tati Jr., you cannot let him beat you. Also, the first inning is going to be massive for Yamamoto. If he can get a, a clean first inning, set the tone, uh, again, against the top three where he got hit hard three three runs in his first start uh, off a of Manny Machado two-run shot, that uh, is going to be really big. And Tatis is obviously the main focal point of this Padres lineup right now, playing the best baseball probably of his entire career. Gavin Lux on the Dodgers side, man. Gavin Lux, I'm telling you, in the bottom of the lineup, Gavin Lux can have a day. He can have a day. He's really starting to look great at the plate. And I'm excited, man. This Dodgers lineup... If they can go 7 deep, again, with Will Smith, Teoscar Hernandez, Max Muncy even. Oh, my goodness. If these guys start hitting, Kike Hernandez hit a home run. Uh, did he hit a home run? He had. I, I remember he had a really good day in game number uh, four. But uh, the Dodgers, their top three, uh, Otani's going to play well. Freddie Freeman's injured, but, you know, he's going to uh, hop off there, uh, hop out there and just hit because that's what Freddie Freeman does. Uh, Mookie Betts, I believe, is going to hit. But if, if this bottom of the lineup comes through, um, that's going to be also Tommy Edmond. Tommy Edmond hasn't looked great at the plate recently, but uh, Tommy Edmond playing shortstop right now, most likely uh, with uh, with Miguel Rojas uh, not playing as good. Um, so yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to watch this game again. Tune in uh, if you made it this far. Pre- appreciate you. Leave a like, subscribe wherever you're watching this, and, and I'll see you guys soon.